History Spotlight, brought to you by HEC Media and the Missouri Historical Society. Hello, I'm Dr. Jody Sowell, president of the Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis, and this is History Spotlight. Football gained popularity in the late 19th century, but it was a much different game than the one we know today. Public historian Adam Cloppy explains how the 1906 St. Louis University football team played a role in this change. For millions of Americans, every weekend between September and January is about football. But all those people kind of owe a debt of gratitude to a team from St. Louis from the early 20th century that really helped change the way that football is played in America today. So let's back up a little bit. Football starts gaining popularity in the United States in the late 19th century, but it's a much different game than what people today would be expecting. One of the biggest differences is that the only way to advance the ball down the field back then was to run the ball past the line of scrimmage, meaning a running back would take the ball and move it past the line of scrimmage to try to advance the ball downfield. And what that led to was huge scrums of defensive players around that ball carrier trying to take him down. And those scrums could end up being pretty violent. You know, people would be trying to rip the ball away and twist the guy's fingers to get the ball out and everything. And it led to a lot of injuries. But those injuries are more than twisted ankles and stuff. You know, people broke their neck, they broke their back. In 1905 alone, 18 people died playing football in America. It was becoming a huge problem. And there was activists who were advocating that football should be banned because of the violence of the sport. And of course, there were other people that wanted to try to save football, find a way to change it to make it a little bit safer. One of those people who supported keeping football around was the president at the time, Teddy Roosevelt. And in 1905, he calls for a conference at the White House from leading football coaches and strategists and people involved in the game to try to come up with some rule changes that could help save football, preserve it into the future. And one of the rule changes they walk away with is to allow for the forward pass in football, where a quarterback can take the ball and throw it past the line of scrimmage to an eligible receiver downfield to try to gain yardage. And the hope was that this would spread out defenses a little bit, right? So you wouldn't have scrums of people around the line of scrimmage, they'd have to cover eligible receivers. But a lot of critics thought this isn't going to work at all, that defenders would just bump receivers off their paths, that quarterbacks won't be accurate enough. It just wouldn't be an effective way to run an offense of football. That all changes in September of 1906. That year, in a game on September 5th, St. Louis University quarterback Bradbury Robinson completes the first forward pass in football history. He throws a 20-yard touchdown pass to an eligible receiver named Jack Schneider. And this is not the only forward pass that SLU throws that year. Their entire offense is built around this fast aerial attack. And they're a really good team. They go undefeated in that 1906 season. And even before the season is over, other coaches from around the country are contacting SLU coach Eddie Kokums to try to get some tips from him about how to implement the forward pass into their game. And it completely changes the way that football is played in America today. So for all those millions of people that watch football every weekend in the United States, they kind of owe a debt of gratitude to the St. Louis University team in 1906 that showed just how effective the forward pass could be. Next on History Spotlight, a court case that sent shockwaves through the country. To learn more about the Missouri Historical Society, visit mohistory.org.